Hello everyone, welcome to my next uh, free tutorial Friday. And I am pretty pressed for time this week, as I probably will be next week. But I wanted to squeeze in a little uh, talk about Chrome. And I had quite a few requests about rendering Chrome on my uh, Facebook page. And since my rendering book, of course, is slow to get finished, I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. But it's basically just going to be an intro on how to think about Chrome. And so I took this little guy way over here in the far right of this rendering. I always liked this ship. Um, and it was Chrome, and it was way out there in the distance. And you can never see it in this rendering I did for Concept Design 2. And um, so I wanted to revisit that little ship. And so I did that for Blast. So that's the ship, and we're going to make it uh, Chrome. And I'm going to walk you through that rendering and the process of that, and that became one of the ships for Blast, so um, our book of spaceship renderings. <clears throat> so this is how it starts. I took, I went back to the original small little brush pen sketch, and I, um, in fact, I might have even done a new little brush pen sketch, but it was based on that ship. And then I ex first explored in different environments. So before I worry about rendering it out and figuring out what it's going to be, uh, when you first start to render Chrome, or anything reflective actually, what's most important is the environment around it. So I mocked up a couple of quick environments, um, just cutting and pasting some photographs I've taken or from previous renderings I've done, um, grab some of my you know custom brush guys. Um, so you could do cut and paste figures, you could do whatever, but just get, you know, get the basic scene roughed out because um, it's all about what's around the object uh, is what's going to reflect into it. So planning your environment, planning your lighting, getting all your colors and values correct first is actually very, very important um, in knowing how to do the reflections, at least what colors and values to do. So let's get rid of these. So those are my first starts. Ultimately, I decided on this background. Okay, and I wanted to render that ship here that we've just seen um, in this environment. So I'm going to walk you through all the layers. Let's just see if I can get it to fit a little bit better. Let's see. I'd like to keep that toolpath open. Let's see if I can get it. Whoa, it's so touchy. I'm not having great success. Getting it just between... Well, let's crop off a little bit of the left side. It's tough with a big horizontal piece trying to get to fit on this 3x4 Cintiq. Okay, so that's my background painting. Um, so let's roll through the layers, talk about the uh, strategy for rendering Chrome. All right, so I've got first in the background there was just a little, like maybe oil rig or top of some huge structure way over the horizon. Who knows? But that's a part of a photograph I took and I just cut and paste threw it out there um, got the values right right based on that atmospheric perspective which we talked about last week um, here's the cast shadow so this point I've already got you know when I'm starting to plot the shadow of course I've already got the ship in there but I'm just showing you the layer structure so my shadows are always set to uh, multiply and if we look normal and you look at the color it's like a darker version of the sky and then when you set it over to multiply, of course, you still see all the rock texture, but it shifts all of that to blue, like the shadows being lit by the ambient uh, color and value of the sky. So that's that. So landing gear, and we can zoom in here for a couple of these, and you'll see that it's a bit of like cut and paste from photos I've taken of some real landing gear, and then I just scruff over and paint over the top. So this is a very classic sort of um, entertainment design production painting style where you do some cut and paste details from photos you've taken and then paint over the top. Some mist. Um, here's my original drawing uh, basically. That's the original and all I've done is just you can see it's very scruffy. I've just blocked in the colors and values of what's reflecting uh, in the surface. So if we just turn off this layer which is a little color dodge layer. Let's just look here so basically, this is the sort of thing I spent like 18 hours of lecture time on my schoolism course um, online explaining because the basic thing is pretty simple, right? It's 
Chrome is actually the easiest reflective surface, I think, to render, and that's because you don't have to worry about the Fresnel effect. You know, it's just straight up a mirror. Um, it tends to be one value step darker. So if I had or one uh, half to one value step darker, if let's say it was reflecting this color in the environment, when that color reflects onto the chrome, it's going to be like right about here, roughly, in the chrome. So the chrome reflection is always just a little like half a value step or one value step darker than what it's actually reflecting. And so you see this is reflecting the sky, and that's all just a tick darker, but it's all the same colors. And the trick is um, to just figure out exactly where the reflections go. Of course, that's the hard part. Um, and then rendering them there. As you'll see, this one's a total cheat. Um, when we get into it, you'll see that I just cut and paste and, and didn't worry about getting the perspective right. Um, but it's enough to trick your eye that to think it's really nice looking chrome. So there I just started to plot out where the reflection of the light goes. Um, so what I did to do this guy, if I was just going to paint some more on that one, okay, I would just grab like these colors and values that are around it, like from the ground, and then I would just start painting into here where I think it's going to reflect. My line of sight is going to bounce back to the ground plane. And then if there was something behind us, like darker, rocks and things, those could get compressed down into those little radiuses and those might reflect into there. And this is just kind of a base placeholder because later you're going to see that we're going to use, um, we're just going to take this photograph, flip it into there and take over those areas. And then the other thing is figuring out your lighting. My shadow says that the light's basically above, a little bit from the right, um, but the shadow doesn't look too far tucked under the ship. So it looks like it's, you know, not exactly noon, but a little bit behind us. Um, and to the right, based on this angle, right on that shadow. Let me write a little thing here for notes. So if I look here, I can see that that shadow is kind of going this way on the tail and this way there. And I can see that this kind of sneaks in under a little bit closer to that landing gear and maybe a little bit longer there. Right? If it was dead straight up, then this tail would kind of be a straight line but the tail is doing something like that, which tells me the sun has kind of shifted a little bit lower behind us out of frame. And that's going to shift my highlights a little bit lower, and it's going to shift them over to the right because this direction like that. So the reflection of all the sun positions, okay, is based on where your line of sight is going to bounce out um, off the shape back up to the light source. All right, so that's what that little color dodge layer was about. So there's the reflection of the ground. And you can see I just cut and paste textures and, and to make it look photographic. And I just roughed it in over. Let's have a look at the mask. So the mask on off is just, you can see when I grossly did it, it probably used the um, cloning tool, right? And clone stamp. I just made a new layer. And for rough ones like this, clone stamp, I would just do something like this. First you want to have on, let's see, it looks like I'm missing a uh, something on my ground here. There's some other little vent things here because I see some yellow reflecting there, but never mind. I'll just show you. Okay, so I would just do stuff like this. And even though it's not upside down, it's not the right perspective, you get enough of the texture in there and I would just grossly put it, you know, and mix it around. Right, and so that sort of thing I'd probably pull from like, if those are distance ro rocks behind us, they'd probably be similar to the ones that are here behind the ship. So you did that sort of thing. And mix in some of those kind of things. So you get a, a photographic texture put in there. And then your layer mask cleans it all up. So use the layer mask to clean up the edges. And that's about it. Um, let's look at the next layer. Looks like similar thing. Maybe just it looks like I decided it wasn't dark enough, so I doubled it, and then I see my opacity is at 41%, so I changed it back down a little bit. Um, okay, starting to add some more photo textures. 
So these are from airplanes that I've taken photos of. And I'm just starting to put in some panels. Um, here's a pilot. So, and you can see it's all on top, right on top of my original sketch. Right, it all comes from my brush pen sketch. Everything was there, all the proportions, all the design, basically. And now I'm just sort of refining and replacing right, with more tech and details and those sort of things. Um, this is my canopy color, which is set to multiply. If we go to normal, let's see what it actually is. Normal, it's that. And so I go to multiply, because I want it to be darker, but I don't want it to be that dark, so change the opacity, something like that. Okay, more details. And then I go back in and you'll see and I start to paint. Let's see what this let's see what this layer mask is doing. Yeah, there's the rough cut and paste. Okay, there's like the first blending layer. So this would be like a cleanup layer on top of everything I have so far. And you can see now I'm just painting right on top. I'm not worrying about preserving the layers underneath and keeping them all separate, right? It's literally just right on top. Treat it like one layer. doesn't matter if it's a graphic, it's a reflection, um, a silhouette, separate pieces. They're all getting blended now onto one. So you see all the work back in here where it connects the tail to the fuselage. So that's all just painting. Uh, some graphics. You probably see it here without the layer mask. So I just go over, add the layer mask to cut, clean up the edge. A little more cut and paste of details and then a little bit of painting. And then you'll start to see that I'm also reflecting, uh, not quite yet, but I'm going to reflect that back into here. This is a weird reflection right through here. I don't think I have time in this video to explain it all, but the idea basically is that through here, your line of sight bounces from here into the canopy and then back to the rocks. So I'm sorry, not the canopy, into this vertical. So this is a reflection of that chrome. It's a double reflection. Um, so let's see where I go with that. All right, more cleanup. Added a fig, adding a figure on top and his reflection. Okay, this is a reflection in the puddles. So there's a bunch of water around here. And if we turn off that, you can see that it's just this rendering at this state that's been flipped vertically. And I didn't uh, bother getting the perspective right. I knew it would be enough just to get the color and the graphics and you know that sort of stuff happening in the puddles and then I apply a layer mask okay let's look at it at 100 percent so here it is so I just grabbed that flipped it put it in the right position um, knowing how high it was above the puddles then I could double it right into the ground plane but I didn't offset for perspective I just cheated and just left it because I know I'm gonna see very little so when I add the layer mask there you can see just little slices of it. And to see only that much, you don't have to worry about getting all the perspective right. And then it should be a little translucent because we want to see through the water as well. So letting that mix a bit. And a couple more little graphics. This thing has a lot of graphics. Okay, and I'm treating the graphics like they are a big decal that's not, obviously it doesn't have clear coat over the top, so I'm not adding reflections back over the top of them. It's more like they came along to this chrome vehicle and they just started uh, painting right over the top with like a semi-gloss or even a matte finish. More graphics, more graphics. The graphics bring a lot of realism. Okay, and so here I'm starting to add a little reflect. There's a reflection of the sun, which lines up with a reflection right on the inside of the helmet. So they should be landing on a similar section of this canopy and the helmet. Um, and back up to that position we talked about earlier. Another guy. The basic narrative here is, and I don't know where my, uh, my little holes are that they've been drilling around here somewhere. Get to them, I guess. Oh, here we go. Vent rings, next layer. Yes, the idea, the basic narrative is use some sort of scientific team working for the Navy and they come out and these guys have been drilling these holes I don't know why but these like vent holes um, so they've drilled them maybe they're drilled a, a while ago because uh, you see there's no debris around them and then they they mark them they like these guys just spray paint around where these 
these probes are, these vents of some sort, and they're doing something, there's some geological activity where there's some steam rising out of them. I have no idea, but it, it made for kind of fun narrative. And most importantly, it made for all this steam coming out of something that I could put in front of the ship because I knew it was going to be painted, you know, pretty quick and dirty. Um, and then also provided this a little bit of additional atmosphere to separate the ship from the background. Okay, there's the reflection of the canopy. And a little cleanup, some cut lines. So when you're doing um, chrome, one of the things that it will look, the surfaces will be a lot of times very difficult to understand. And so what you want to do is uh, the cut lines are one of the things that really help the form read. So by adding cut lines, you can start to hint at how vertical the surface is through here and that really that's where it connects and this is doubling the reflection through. Um, and so those are tricky little areas, especially in side view to communicate, but these little cut lines add a lot of interest um, and also help to describe the form quite a bit, especially on chrome. So those are important, important things to add. So you can see it without, it looks sort of, you know, really difficult to understand and when you're rendering chrome you have to be don't be afraid of letting it disappear and become its background color right at the silhouette don't try to hold the edge with a line um, chrome doesn't do that chrome really disappears you see this edge down here it really disappears and it becomes its background color and value same with that edge there now I have some things along the center here that are matte surface and that's helping to hold the edge same with this guy right but you'll still see that wherever it butts right up against something, whether it's the sky um, or an object, right, or the ground in this case, it really just disappears and becomes its, its uh, background color and value. And don't be afraid of losing those edges because that's what happens with chrome. Okay, here's my reflection of the sun. That's just a color dodge layer. And you can see here I used a scruffy uh, textured brush when I did that. And what it, that allowed me to do was give this chrome a little bit of a weathered look. And um, I, so there's scratches in it, basically. So if we look at this reflection of the sun through here. And the scratches will extend the reflection of the sun. It's kind of like metallic in a way. Um, but it, so all those little scratches are going to pick up hints of the sun reflection. And I was exploring another variation for the top changing all the sections, um, but I op opted away from it, I, I believe. Yes. Okay, and then the very last thing, I have them all in one layer here, so let's turn off these. So Chrome is simple in that you, conceptually, you just have to reflect what's in the environment. Oops, get you on my shadow. Looks like I'm missing a couple of layers here. Might have to reopen this so it comes back to its normal state. Okay, I'm back with the final um, layers. Everything's turned on properly, so I've got all my layers set up. And let's have a look at the very last. So there's my vent rings are back in the background and the foreground. And here's a uh, layer mask. So I must have just grabbed the whole thing, including reflection, all of this, put it together on one layer, and then I just kept the ship. And then for the dirt pass, I just painted directly on that layer and just started to scrape away some of the, the graphics, the paint, the paint on it, also adding a bit of um, directional weathering, like there's oil or dirt or something that comes out of those ports and goes across the surface, across the cut lines that sort of thing. So uh, chipped off some of the red paint here on these leading edges. Just the classic sort of weathering things you've seen me do on my other uh, tutorials on the channel. Okay, and then adding some mist coming out of these uh, vents in the foreground. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time detailing the guys. So, right, the classic movie way to go is when in doubt, smoke it out. All right, so I just threw a lot of mist over this guy so I don't have to worry about detailing him that much. And 
there's more mist here in the foreground like these things extend way behind us and experimenting with another guy there I never used and what's that my perspective guidelines um, all right so that's it um, so a couple things to think about when you try to do chrome one it's always good to work from a good piece of photo reference to help um, with that but if you're trying to do something original it's a little tough right I have I have the ground plane here that I could reflect so you need to know some physics a um, couple key things though when chrome reflects the environment around it it reflects it at about a half a value step or one value step darker than what it's reflecting um, also keep in mind uh, don't be afraid to lose your edges right chrome the way it really looks like chrome is that the silhouette disappears uh, if you're an industrial designer, you're going to really struggle with that concept um, because we always like to show our silhouettes as being very strong, especially if you're used to doing really nice heavy line weight like you saw a couple uh, tutorials ago, a couple couple weeks ago. I talked a lot about silhouettes and using heavy line weight. Well, when you go and render something in Chrome and you want it to look photo real, you have to pretty much forget about that because the way to make it look like real Chrome is to let it become the color of its environment. Um, third big help helping point I think as far as a short form quick uh, tips and suggestions is to really design your environment you have to know your environment not just what we see in the frame but actually what's behind us uh, as well so where is the Sun location um, where does my line of sight bounce off of the shiny form back to the Sun that's where I'm going to reflect it in the surface also um, are there buildings and other things behind us? Are there sand dunes, things that we can't see? Those would be things you'd have to incorporate into the reflection. Um, are there clouds in the sky? That sort of thing. And they might we might not see them in frame, but we're going to see them in the reflection. Um, and lastly, don't be afraid when you're rendering chrome things that um, the surfaces are going to be difficult to understand. So don't struggle with it so much. Um, just let it, you know, when you're rendering something chrome you're, you're trying to basically tell the audience that it's chrome not that you know these are the, the perfect forms of the surface if you really want to show the form render it in something like a matte silver right that would really help show the form um, you're trying to show it in its photoreal form um, and it's you know it's it's sort of finished material combination in an environment and so what you want to do is um, don't be afraid to let that stuff be confusing and use your cut lines to help and try and clarify some of those section changes um, or your perspective in this case I don't have much in the way of perspective because it's just a side view so those cut lines become even more important um, I think that's it uh, for the quick quick intro on how I approach rendering Chrome um, you see a lot of cheats in this one um, but it works uh, this was an illustration for um, our book Blast a uh, collection of spaceship renderings and oh, a big thanks to everybody who who said they're out, um, you know, who's already bought one of my previous books to help support this channel. You notice there's no advertising on this channel. I like to try and keep it that way. Um, it's a much nicer experience. So please, if you uh, can, go buy a book. Um, also, my uh, Schoolism course on rendering reflective surfaces is on right now with a sale for, I think, for the rest of this month. No, that's not many days. I think through October. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it's $100 off. I know it's still expensive, but it's a huge amount of information. And um, pool with a pull your money with a couple of friends, get together, you know, have a pizza, beer, reflection rendering meeting once a week, and watch it together. So I'll put up some links uh, to this book and also to the uh, Schoolism course. And the drawing book is almost here. So. I'm still recording tutorials for it, and it's still being printed. I think we're moving into binding right now, so we're a few weeks away. Thanks all for the support, and have a great week. Bye-bye.